Welcome to episode 3 of the Dev Diary of Nanuka, Secret of the Shot in Moon. As we are working on this new game, we are documenting the development process with monthly videos. We share insights on how we design the levels, the gameplay and the characters. In this episode we update you on how we intend to use the allies that Nanuka will encounter during her adventure. We will also talk about the design of the Steam page for the game, the changes we made to the combat system to make it more dynamic and rewarding, and we go a bit technical on how we handle rotating sprites. We hope you enjoyed the episode. So the goals for this week were to work some more on level 5 and make sure we have all the objects and the enemies in place. Uh, in regards to the enemies, we're working with placeholders at the moment to make sure the feeling is what we want and then uh, we'll tweak the animations and uh, polish them when we're happy with the results. Also in terms of designs or other levels, uh, we're working on the shrine level uh, and Tommy is taking care of that. And Leo is working on the objects uh, for this section of the game. We also uh, kept discussing how we can use the allies uh, later on in the game, so we explore uh, different ideas for puzzles and abilities. And in this episode we also have Rosalia with us. She takes care of marketing and PR at Out of the Beat and she'll talk about how we work on the Steam page for Nanuka. For us, as a small indie studio, marketing is super important. It's how we get our games noticed and build excitement. Before announcing our new game, we made sure we had everything ready. We worked on key art, a logo, a teaser trailer, and of course the Steam page to direct everyone to. The Steam page is crucial because it lets potential players wishlist the game, and we need those wishlists to have a strong launch. So we started early and got our strategy in place. Creating the Steam page was a big task. We needed an iconic image that captured the game's essence. Nanuka's a bit personality, the shattering moon in the background, and key characters. It was tough since many characters weren't fully defined yet, but we included those who were ready. We timed our game announcement with the teaser trailer release. The trailer is also an important feature of the Steam page, but we'll talk more about it in a future episode. For the Steam page description, the decision we took was to let animated GIFs do the talking. Instead of long text, you'll see clips showing Nanuka's clumsiness, her combat skills and cool moves like wall jumps and rolling on the floor. Now that our Steam page is live, we plan to keep it updated with our progress. We'll add new clips from upcoming levels and post game announcements to connect with our community. If you are curious about our marketing strategy or publishing process, drop your questions in the comments and we'll cover them in a future episode. So at the beginning of the week, I was still working on some objects for level 5. One of these objects is a little ghost you interact with. And this ghost at some point has the ability to rotate. Uh, for this, I had to go and add uh, support for rotated sprite in our own engine. So we do everything from scratch, so we haven't got anything built in. If we need something, we need to build it from scratch. Of course, we got many things already done in Serial Box that we developed in other games. But for this game, we got a new version of our own uh, compressed sprite routines. Those are the routines that we use to draw uh, large animations and we use for everything in the game, from small sprites to big animations, because it's very efficient, it's very fast to draw and doesn't take much memory. Those routines were lacking support for rotation and I wanted to do it properly, so I went and added rotation support and to make sure it was done properly, I used a square sprite which contained a checkboard pattern. That way I could check that everything was rotated properly and we made it odd, so there was one white pixel at the center, so the checkboard pattern was red and black with a white pixel in the center to make sure when the sprite rotated, the central point would stay fixed and it wouldn't move around. So it's always good practice to visualize uh, what you do with sprites and make sure everything looks correct. In the case of rotation, uh, having a checkboard pattern 
with a you know distinguishable dot at the center really helps to make sure everything rotates properly and is symmetric left and right, uh, up and down, and you know, and the central point as well. Uh, so that was quite satisfying to do. Uh, so that way we got little memory footprint and uh, support for large animation now with rotation as well. And uh, yeah, that was done and uh, it worked well for the, for the ghost object and we are planning to reuse it for other objects like arrows and other elements that are supposed to be rotating. Another thing we did while working on the enemies for the level was rework the um, combat system. So we wanted to give the player more freedom during the combat. So we removed the constraint of colliding with the enemy and that really led to many, many changes. So in our opinion, they're quite good. So Leo and I worked uh, together to rework some animations of the enemies and some animations of Nanooka as well because they're linked together. And that really led to simplifying the combat system in a good way, where, like where the player, as I mentioned, has more freedom during combat and there is a faster exchange of um, punches and blows. And it's really fun and we're very happy with the state of things at the moment. We'll keep working with placeholders because, again, we want to make sure uh, the game is as, as much fun as possible and then we'll refine all the animations uh, once this is done. The changes we made to the combat system uh, required a lot of testing and back and forth between me and Ali. Uh, we have this one main um, enemy that we use for testing all of the like abilities and interactions, uh, kind of like a master enemy that has a bit of everything uh, in it. And um, with this enemy, yeah, we, we had to add and remove a bunch of different animations and try to um, have a good balance between what work do we do with animations and what work do we do with the code, uh, such as moving the enemy. Um, originally, the enemy would have, would have smaller baked-in steps where in animation he would uh, move from A to B, and then code-wise it would only update where it was at the start and then at the end. Um, Whereas now with the change of not having a collision with the player anymore, uh, we decided to also give the enemy a bit uh, more movement by making them run faster and have the run uh, be done through code. So this week we finally got to a point with the placeholder levels that we're happy with and we can start to continue with the enemy placeholders along with other puzzle assets and we're going to focus more on the allies and their gameplay. So as we discussed, we implement several levels in the game with placeholder graphics. Now level 3 had all the objects of the levels but no enemies, so this week we had the time at the beginning of the week to work on those enemies and we implemented all of them. That way you can now play level 3 uh, as intended with all the gameplay elements. So even though the graphic is not final by seed placeholder, um, the gameplay is as close to the final gameplay as possible. Along with this, we're also starting to prototype the boss fight and we're starting with the Kitsune fight. This is the first mandatory boss fight, so we've kept it quite simple in design. But this doesn't mean it's necessarily easy and it definitely doesn't mean that the later bosses will be anywhere as close in difficulty. We're prototyping the boss the same way as we prototype the rest of the game where we're coming up with the placeholder assets and animations beforehand to see if the gameplay feels good and fun before we finalise the graphics. Some of our ranged enemies, initially they were archers that would have a bow and an arrow that they would shoot towards you. We rebranded those to be mages that shoot kind of like magic balls towards you because we realized that the arrows would have to go very fast in order for them to seem realistic or not seem like they're just hovering in the air. Whereas if we went with a mage casting magic bullets, we can tweak the speed and trajectory of the bullets in any way we want, which opens up a lot more possibilities for this enemy. This week we've decided to focus on the allies and their gameplay and how they're going to interact with enemies and puzzles and the environment. So we've started to prototype 
so we can knuckle down exactly how they're going to work. Uh, so the first prototype had Nanuka going to specific places in the screen to then trigger the ally to come into the screen and help you. Now again, this looked good on paper, but when we tried it, we really didn't like it. Especially the fact that Nanuka would be stuck while the ally was performing their own action. Uh, that really went against the, the spirit of the game. Uh, the main uh, philosophy behind Nanuka is to let players do what they like the most, what they enjoy. So work with rewards rather than frustration. Uh, so we decided to prototype a different idea. Uh, where you can summon the allies straight away at any point, you decide which one and they perform their own abilities straight away as you keep controlling Nanuka. And as soon as we tried it, we loved it. All of us, we, it really clicked for us and uh, we feel like we're really in a good place to now move forward with the design uh, the specific abilities of each ally. Thank you for watching this episode of the Dead Diary of Nanuka Secret of the Shattering Moon. If you have any questions for us, please leave it in the comments and we'll make sure to answer it. And if there is any aspect of the development you are more interested in, let us know with a comment to this video and we'll try to include it in one of the next episodes. In the meantime, please like the video and if you like this series, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll be notified when the next video is out. See you next time. I designed the first boss part of the game. I got straight to working on the place. Place? Tom and I worked on... So Tom and I worked on finishing the... <laughs> <laughs>